Dear family, today is the 20th of July 2022 and I'm back to do part two of the um, series I'm going to do about the nature and the names of God. And I explained in the video yesterday, um, and, and you might like to just have a quick look at it, um, I explained to you why I had to, had to make this decision to do a study on our God and who he is. And the reason was, just a few days ago, the Lord said to me, they need to know all about me. And he wanted me to talk about his divine nature. And I thought the best way to do that is to look at the names of our God. And then at the end, look at some of the parts of his nature, because during that time, we will make discoveries about who he is. And so I'm probably going to break this up into about three because the other thing the Lord has been saying is he wants me to just make the videos a little bit shorter. And I really do struggle with it. It always seem to take me, seems to take me about 12 minutes or just a minute or two after that. Um, so I'm really going to try today um, to just do um, probably and maybe about eight of the names of God and then we'll do some more and also get into the character of God. So let's begin. Sorry, everyone, I'll just get that into your screen a bit so you can see a bit better. So the names of God. And I thought the great place to start is the Alpha and Omega. You can see the Alpha sign on the left and the Omega sign on the right. And it means the beginning and the end. And that's who God is. He is there from the beginning and he's there from the right to the end. And we'll see in Revelations 22, 12 to 13, that this is what he calls himself. And it says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So nobody is going to be before him or will ever come after him. He is existing from the beginning to the end. All right, let's look at the next one, Yahweh. And Yahweh means, oh, sorry, guys. Yahweh means him that brings into existence whatever exists. I'll read that again because it's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Him that brings into existence everything that exists. Okay, so it's speaking about the Creator God. And so we're going to look at Genesis 1 1. And I'm not going to look at John 1 1 to 4 because um, I want to look at that uh, when we speak about the Word of God, which is His character. So uh, Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So in the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is the creator God. So we've learned he's the beginning and he's the end and he is the creator. So what does I am mean? And we have to go to Exodus to read about that. So this story begins when Moses is in front of the burning bush and um, God is giving him instructions. And um, I will start reading from verse 13. Okay, so Moses replied and said, When I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? So what can I tell them? God said, I am who I am. You must tell them, the one who is called I am has sent me to you. Tell the Israelites that I, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob have sent you to them. This is my name forever. This is what all generations are to call me. So what does I am mean? And I just think this is the perfect name for God because it is the essence of everything. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He is um, always in existence. 
He just is who he is. He is the great I am. So this next one, this was a learning curve for me too. I had never heard of El Olam. And in, it really actually means the everlasting God. And let's read Isaiah 40, 28. And it says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, never faints nor is weary. He, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he, in strengths, he increases strength. So it says he is the everlasting God, the Lord. That is what El Olam means. And there's another verse in Psalm 90 verse 2, which also helps us to understand this concept. I'm going to start at verse 1. Psalm 90 verse 1 says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. So he is everlasting. Right, we're moving on to Elohim. And Elohim is one that we um, won't be looking at scriptures for, uh, but I have looked into the meaning of the name, and it means God, essentially. <laughs> um, so I looked up the word um, God in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and from a Christian perspective, it means the creator, the ruler of the universe, the source of all moral authority, the supreme being. I think that sums him up quite well, don't you? The next one, Adonai, I also don't have um, references for, but it means my Lord, and it's fairly straightforward. However, the next one, Emmanuel, that's something special. And we can read in Matthew um, some scriptures around this. It's a little bit complex, but the scriptures that we're reading in Matthew speak about uh, the birth of Jesus and the child being Emmanuel, God is with us. Those same words were written eight or nine hundred years before by Isaiah when he was prophesying about the birth of the Messiah. So isn't that amazing? So let's look at Matthew 1. I'm going to start at verse 21 because it's actually um, it actually explains how Jesus had the two names. And the angel is speaking to Joseph and he's saying, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you will call him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So that is what Jesus means, the Saviour. But it goes on to say, So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, and that's the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be, shall be with child and bear a son, and they will call him his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. And to me, that just touches my soul because that is the very essence of our faith, isn't it? When God gave part of his self to become man, to become flesh, his own son, he gave him in the most humble form to come down and be born in a stable or in a cave um, and have the most humble of births. And to serve and to die for us all. God with us. Has there been any other religion in this world that has such a humble God, such a giving, loving God as this? I very much doubt it. It is a unique sacrifice by an almighty divine God. 
And that's what I shall say about that. And you no doubt have much in your heart that you would like to say about that one, Emmanuel. It is such a beautiful name. All right. So the last one we're going to cover today is Jehovah. And Jehovah is just like Elohim and Adonai. It means God. It's Israel's God. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to make another video, part three, which will cover a couple more names of God. There are many more out there, but I've just chosen um, some really important ones, uh, but they're all important. <laughs> it's very hard to know where to stop with our Lord, our God. Um, but um, we will cover the part three. Um, probably that will be the final one, um, probably in a few days, as soon as I can get that done. So blessings to you all. Bye for now.